Hey guys, so I just wanted to do a video on the basics of Turo and how it works and operates. Um, if you're looking or thinking about becoming a host on Turo and maybe listing an extra car that you have or potentially purchasing a car and have this be either a side business or thinking about doing it full time, um, I'll run you through the basics. I get people texting me and calling me all the time just asking about um, you know, how the mechanics of this whole thing works. How do you get started? Um, what's the comfort level what have I experienced so I'm going to talk about that in this video and then later on in my other videos I'll go more in depth about how things like the insurance coverage works how do you set up insurance for yourself how do you handle claims you know in, a, in the um, case that something happens to one of your cars while it's with the renter so all that stuff um, sort of the more serious nitty-gritty stuff I'll have individual videos for just that because there's definitely a lot of content behind that that I can share with you guys and details that you'd want to know. But in terms of just really getting started, um, one, if you have an extra car, that's great. Two, if you're looking to purchase a vehicle um, that you either want to drive for yourself and you're looking to potentially cover your car payment or you're looking to buy a vehicle that you could list on Turo just to start generating some income, um, the way you get started is super simple. Uh, you either have a car or you get a car and you decide what that car is you go on to Turo, you sign up as an account, as an owner, for an owner account. Um, I believe they ask you uh, just for your basic car information like the make, the model, the year, color, and things like that. And what you do essentially is you set up a profile or otherwise known as a listing. And in that listing, you provide all the details about your car. And the more descriptive you are, the better it is, right? So people want details. They want to know exactly what they're getting for their money, what what they're buying into and you want to excite them you want to use your description as really a sales tool to really entice them to wanting to rent your car um, so once you set up your description and it's so easy to gives you a walkthrough of all the information that they need from you to set up your listing you upload some really great pictures and you set your price or Turo has automatic pricing and in my other videos I'll go more into detail about you know what I think the pros and cons are between the two what I personally do and you guys can kind of use some of my strategies so that's all pretty much you have to do to get started and once you have your listing completed um, it'll go live into Turo search and when people are looking for cards in your area it'll pop up now on the other side of things the renter side of things that's usually where people kind of get a little bit nervous because you know especially if it's your first time it's kind of weird handing off your keys to a total stranger um, but as I said I've been with Turo now for three plus years I would say and I've grown an entire fleet of cars um, on the platform and over the years their process of vetting renters has become really 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 good and it's definitely a system that you can trust into um, and it's getting better so it's definitely not perfect yet, but as time goes on, it's getting better and better and better. So on the renter side, um, for people that do want to rent a vehicle, uh, Turo has a pretty stringent verification process that they put the renter through. Um, they do everything from checking their driver's license, having you take a selfie with your license just to verify that it is you. Uh, they keep records of that. And so they really do make you go through a whole process. They make you verify your phone number. They have you sync your Facebook account just to really verify that you're a real person and that you're not using a fake ID and things of that nature so you can really trust into the process of you know 99.9% .9 of the time the renters that you'll get they're great people um, and so basically you'll get an inquiry and so there's two ways that the inquiries work when somebody is looking to rent your car and that depends on your settings which I'll also go in more in depth than later on in some other videos so either you can do instant book and instant book is you know you have your availability on your calendar and a renter that sees your car can automatically book and they don't need to wait for you to confirm the booking. Once they hit book, that means that it's already been confirmed that they're getting that booking and that they can count on picking up the car on the dates that they selected. And then the other way is if you don't have instant book, the renter has to request to book your vehicle. And that means that you'll get a notification saying, hey, uh, John wants to rent your vehicle from these dates and this time 
time. If this works for you, go ahead and hit approve. And Turo will actually give you a time frame to do that in. Otherwise, it'll automatically cancel that request. And you definitely don't want to do that. So in that way, you can kind of take a look at if it'll work with your schedule. You can coordinate with the renter. Hey, maybe I'm not available at this time, but I can get it to you either earlier or later in the day. And usually you can work it out with the renter. Um, so those are sort of the two different ways that you do it. Then once your bookings have been confirmed between you and the renter, um, you see the reservation on your end and you guys decide where you're going to meet up. So usually with your profile, you set your meeting location if somebody is going to come pick up the vehicle from you. So for me, I do it at my house. Um, some people prefer to do it in more public spaces like a Starbucks or something like that. And then the other option is delivery. And again, that depends on the settings that you created for your profile. So if you're available to do delivery and your renter opted in for delivery, they'll provide you the address and that's where you would take the car. And then then uh, once it is time for your rental, there's just a few things that you have to do. One of the things is you really want to maintain your cars and make a really good impression for your renter because you really want them to enjoy the experience so that they tell their friends and that they come back and rent from you again, right? And you kind of create that repeat business, that referral business for yourself. So you want to make sure your car is clean, it's washed, you know, you want to give it a full tank of gas and just really have it the way that you would want it, right? Really nice and clean and just perfect and ready to go for the renter. Before you hand off the car, you do a thorough check of your car, um, take pictures of everything, the front, the back, the sides, um, take a picture of your mileage and your gas gauge, the interior of your car, and you upload all of that to Turo. And Turo will actually prompt you and remind you, hey, it's time for John's rental. Um, prepare for your check-in by uploading pictures. It'll ask you for the mileage and the gas. And then finally, once you do meet with your renter, um, one of the first things that you want to do is ask to check their license and to make sure that the name matches the name that's on uh, the tour reservation along with the date of birth right so you just want to verify the person that you're handing off the car to is in fact the person that rented it from you um, and then aside from that you just give them a quick walkthrough of your car ask them if they have any questions hand them over your keys and just trust in the process um, and you know make that money off of your rental while you get to sit back and relax while someone else is enjoying your car and that's about it and then when the rental ends once again you coordinate with them either you guys meet up at the same spot which is usually the case um, for the time that was designated you guys trade keys and at the end you do the same exact thing that you do when you hand it off the car so you do a full walk through the car take pictures one more time just to make sure that you're getting it back the way that you had given it off to the renter you know, pictures are so important because that's really what will, it's kind of, you know, just a, a documentation for, you know, the condition that you gave it in and the condition that you got it back in. So those are just the few things that you have to do. So uh, it might sound long, but it's actually a really simple process that moves incredibly quick. So that's the basics of how Tura works, especially if you're looking to become a host. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, all eight of my cars are out. My entire fleet is rented out on this Friday. So I'm actually here at the dealership um, trying to to buy this car that I'm sitting in right now so have the sticker price right here in my hands um, I'm looking at another Corvette so I'm waiting for the guys inside to write up my deal so I'm super excited to make another addition to my fleet and I'll also definitely upload some videos on how I'm able to buy so many cars how frequently I buy cars you know I try to my goal right now is to buy a car you know every month maybe two every single month so I am super excited um, fingers crossed that I get this deal done today and I get to drive this awesome Corvette off the lot. So stay tuned for some more videos.